Okay, so welcome to the beginner's course in chess. Revisiting, rather, the beginner's course to chess. So we've already done the beginner's course in chess 2020, I believe it was. And now we're just basically revisiting, just to take a look at um, if anything's changed within the, the process, uh, if there's any further developments, or if it's stayed relatively the same. Okay, so we're going to just come through the center here. So basically this pawn is protecting this square, well, attacking this square and this square. So basically it's owning, managing this area here. This knight is managing this area, this area, this area, if you like. So in essence, we're feeling fairly good. Got to bear in mind the opponent is also owning squares as well with their pieces so at this moment in time we're just going to attack through the center the opponent obviously is moving really quite quick so they're obviously used to this type of maneuver so we don't need to capture this pawn we could now utilize our smaller piece to attack a higher piece which is one of the key things from the beginner um, lessons tutorial that we covered and it stands all the way through the intermediate and the advanced process as well. So now the knight is on the rim at the moment. Doesn't necessarily mean it's dim just because it is there. It's only dim really if it can't get out, it's trapped or it just gets taken off the board and it improves your position. So don't jump too quickly to assumptions that a knight on the rim is dim. It can be quite effective if used appropriately. So now we've got to look at improving our position. So we want to go and castle, keeping it nice and basic and simple. So we can bring our bishop here or we can bring the bishop here. I'm going to bring it here because it don't want to block anything stopping our queen transitioning through at this moment in time if it needs to. So we're looking to go and castle, not as quickly as possible, but making sure that there's nothing else that is going to occur in the game. We could do the smaller piece attack in the higher piece, but we don't have anything supporting this pawn at the moment. So, as beginners, we're just basically castling, keeping it nice and steady. Now the opponent's moved two squares with their pawn. We could do on pass on, but is that going to improve our position if we do? Or do we stay with this lockdown um, position that we've got? Bishop does have a check on the king. Obviously it can get rid of the bishop, but then we won't be able to do on pass on here. So if we did do on pass on, could take with his pawn, or probably more likely that they're going to take with their bishop. So if they do that, we could then potentially put a check on their king. The king can move, or the bishop can come back to defend then we can take the bishop off the board. Do we like them apples? I think we'll give that a, an attempt. So we think the bishop is actually going to take. So we're trying to improve our position. Didn't really want to go for the stonewall center. So I'm going to put a check on the king to see what they actually do. Like I said, they can move the king, but it does bring the bishop back. We could bring our knight through now defending the bishop. Bishop takes, knight takes, but then the queen comes and they win a kind of tempo in terms of attacking our knight. So I'm actually going to just take the bishop off the board, really keeping it simple. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board. So we could move our queen, queen up now, attacking the undefended rook. So at this moment in time, we've got explanations for the movements that we're making. So he's now actually looking to exchange the queen off, brings the knight back in. Is there anything wrong with our position? Not really. So I think we could just take the queen off the board. There's no other checks that we can put on because we can't go here, the pawn takes. Can't go here, the pawn takes. So we may as well take the queen off the board. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. So the next thing we're looking at is potentially bringing the bishop here, pressuring this pawn. The bishop is protecting at the moment, but it gives them something to think about. Do they push down, then we can actually capture, or does he just stay there, just developing his bishop because his bishop is protecting it? Got to be mindful that the knight can jump here, but our knight can take, but it could jump here and then look to actually come for this pawn. 
So it might be advisable to push a pawn up, either this pawn or this pawn, to prevent that. Maybe we push with this pawn here because then maybe our knight can come out and look to get active here. So I'm going to push this pawn just to stop the knight from jumping here. So thinking ahead, looking at potential blind spots um, from our game. So they've pushed here looking to maybe manage this area it looks like. Because it's kind of stopping their knight from jumping out here. So maybe they're going to bring the knight out here. Also maybe it's stopping the bishop from coming to this side. So we could develop the knight, as we said, maybe get to this square here. It looks like a, a powerful maneuver. Sights of that type of thing. So we're going to see if we can get away with it or not. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. No, it's not letting us have that. So the king's moved. They've not actually got castled. So in a, in a set. Oh, and they've resigned. They've resigned because we're going to get the rook anyway. Yeah, so as we were going through our discussions, I was going to talk about potential for the bishop coming here, but again, it's not going to work. But this move here is going to win the rook because we'll have a check on the king. So hopefully that explained um, the basic simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. Um, and that really stands us throughout the whole of the basic the beginner the intermediate the advanced uh, level type chess that you would operate for yourself um, nothing set in stone but it's a simpler way of understanding the mechanics of chess in terms of what decisions you're going to make regarding the movements that you're going to make in its most simplistic terms Okay, so this is the beginner tutorial to chess extension. So I'm actually going to push here because obviously the knight is going to get pressured. So in this precarious position here, now we're actually attacking the pawn at the minute, but because the queen is not defending this um, knight, the bishop has come down x-raying through. So now the queen is defending uh, the knight. So we've done quite a bit of maneuvers. We're trying to catch up actually um, in the game here. I'm going to go here. So now it's going to double our pawns in a sense because the queen has to take. So then they're going to double the pawns here. But we still have castling rights on the queen side. We don't mind doubling the pawns on this side here. We frantically got... Oh, what's happened? We frantically got to this um, stage. Um, because obviously the opponent started dead quick and you know the, the jump off sometimes if you don't make a move quickly right so let's have a look at this we could queenside castle it's already pushed the pawn down we could just develop the bishop here and then kingside castle and that leaves we're protecting the pawn not doubling the pawns again don't really have a problem doubling the pawns i'm actually going to just bring the bishop here it's looking to support the knight so the process goes something like positions, checks, captures, threats, support, blocking, position. So let's have a look at that um, process now. We've looked at the smaller piece attacking the higher piece. We've looked at the areas that pieces are actually managing and controlling, such as the knight is managing and controlling these areas here. More managing, not really controlling. So we're going to castle on the king side while they're pushing down on the queen side. We've got lots of pieces around our king, so we feel fairly comfortable. So they've not actually taken our knight. So we could move our knight out of the way to attack their bishop. But do I really want to invite his knight into the party just yet? Could open up, but at this moment in time, I'm feeling fairly comfortable with this position. So what's the next stage thing? could do a scud missile and just push this one up to the side or we could see what the bishop actually wants to do a small piece attacking a higher piece out of those decisions can't be wrong so they do actually capture so now we've got some sort of activity on our king side so what's the next step next step thing still chomping at the bit really to 
get this pawn, get this queen activated, maybe attacking the knight here. But is there something else in the meantime? I'm actually going to go for it and attack the head of the snake, as we've mentioned before. So attacking the head of the snake, if you've got a pawn chain, if you attack the head or if you attack the base of the pawn chain, that pawn chain will eventually kind of fall and you know fall to the wayside. So they may not consider taking, they may be wanting to get their knight into the centre here. So they've not captured, so we could push up. He does take, but then takes and then he'll have, um, he'll have a pass pawn. So you have to be careful of that. So every movement that you make, you have to be mindful of what is the chain reaction to that manoeuvre. Our next stage thing potentially is then looking to support the pawn here to actually get the pawn attacking this pawn around the centre because we like to attack around the edges of the centre. We could bring this rook here to support this pawn if it pushes up. So at this stage in time I think I'm going to do the... Whoa, what was that? So they've done like a preemptive type move which luckily for them it hasn't landed on anything. So the queen can, can't, 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 and can't, and can't. But we can continue with this move. But if we do that, the knight's going to be in the center. We don't want that. So we're going to push. And it looks like the opponent may have left the game. Maybe we we're taking too long with our moves. But you get the general idea. So basically, we're attacking hopefully weaker areas to try and strengthen our position on the board it does look like they have left okay we'll claim victory on that so we'll go on to the next one so looking for position checks captures threats support blocking position now the term checks, most people will go, yeah, it's checks on the king, but as we've mentioned in the answer process, it can be, you don't get a check on the king immediately. So reframe it in your head and say, well, I'm putting a check on a piece and the higher the piece you can put a check on, it's almost like putting a check on the king. So that helps with the sort of choice of maneuvers. So I'm going to put a check on this um, pawn yeah, so it's improved my position. I'm happy with that. Could attack, but I'm just going to bring the bishop out here for position. Better position. That's the number one thing for me, position. So if my position can be improved, then I will choose that. And if there's a good check, then obviously I, I will go for a check. But if that check doesn't improve my position, then I will hang fire on that check and still look for a better position. Oh, okay, so they've given up the bishop for free, so it looks like it might be one of those games. And they may be going to um, resign at this point, I suppose. Or did they think that bishop was supported in some way? So they've gone for a long pause um, again. You do get games like this sometimes and sometimes you get some really strong games so okay they're still playing on so this bishop oh he's given up the queen okay so we'll take the queen <laughs> oh dear and yes they have left the game now five four three two one and claim victory on that side. These types of games, um, you know, where players are doing this sort of stuff. Again, I do believe they are half decently good for practicing seeing the stuff as a beginner. And if you're an absolute beginner, um, these are gold dust because you might not see that. You might not have seen that that bishop was unprotected. You know, you might not see that the queen had put their selves in danger. So it's noticing and finding those things as an absolute beginner. That's really what you need to be training on. You know, so I think this, this was a good example of things to watch out for, things to capture, 
position look at your position is your position going to be okay so we'll go on to the next one so this is still the uh, beginners tutorial revisited so we've pushed the pawn up and now we're looking to support the pawn okay and we're going to capture here and we're not going to capture the knight for this one we're going to try and improve our position and we know the story behind this pawn push here is so that when the knight comes here this pawn if it does come down onto the knight so we want to improve our position and develop pieces as best possible okay so now they've left the knight here we don't mind doubling the pawn so we want to make, basically see whether or not we can go and get castled for king safety traditionally castling so we will castle traditionally okay so the opponent's moving real quick so i'm actually just going to bring the bishop here supporting the knight now i don't think i'll take the even if the knight did take i'd still take with the pawn so now they've castled got the pawn here we're not going to push up because it'll just push down so that doesn't make any sense so the smallest of details probably just bringing this pawn here preventing any actions from the knights coming down etc could push up again or just develop the rook so i'm just going to bring the rook across now hopefully maybe getting a two on one so the opponent's moving real quick again they're going for these simplified maneuvers of potentially putting some pressure on some area somewhere now i'm going to take the, the knight because my i've got my position sorted i'm fairly comfortable so now a smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong in this situation so they're going to go back so that's really quite nice for us so we could bring our queen across could bring the bishop back to give the king some company because as you can see their bishops are now facing towards our king area so there may be some type of attack kicking off could look to push here but how many pieces are on there he's got his bishop he's got the pawn and he's got the knight and what do we have we have the pawn and we have the bishop so we'll probably lose out in that exchange but it is a nice position it looks it looks hefty we could look to bring the queen here to attack the pawn or make it look like we're attacking the pawn only thing is we've got the x-ray through from the um, bishop so what is the real plan so from there in my head the real plan is potentially to get the queen across here getting a two on one onto this pawn so i've got to give that a go okay so trying to work some magic towards a pawn that's got one one defender at the moment it's easily defended because obviously it can bring that back so they're thinking about that pawn which is good so now we can come and bring the queen here it is actually attacking the knight but it's also attacking the pawn so he's going to have to find a piece that's going to be able to defend the pawn but not the knight so we can take the knight now so you saw the picture developing and building up there so they've actually resigned from that one so again that's another uh, quick example of position play for us looking at appropriate targeting utilizing the answer process um, for beginners keeping it nice and simple and targeting weak areas and unsupported pieces keeping it real simple simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically to improve your position as a beginner just keep it simple ordinarily you just look to take pieces off the board if you're not familiar with the pieces then just practice um, utilizing the pieces and just take pieces off the board just to get used to what they actually do then you have to be mindful of if i do capture i'm inviting the queen into the party is it a good position for the queen it's not extremely strong so we might as well just take the knight off the board yeah so they're moving dead quick like they have got it sewn up this is where we have to just yeah, just box a bit clever i do like pushing the pawn onto the queen the smaller piece attacking the higher piece i think evaluation frowns on it but it's not proven to me that that is a bad move um nobody's proved to me that it there's a massive disadvantage somewhere so i like that move 
as a beginner you'll find the moves that you like to do um, you'll have your own kind of your little favorite moves which the evaluation bar may con may consistently hate but you kind of like the feel of that move so we've got one on the back so are we looking to get active not necessarily here because his bishop can take then we would lose the knight because the queen would take the knight and we could move it to here attacking this pawn which the bishop is at currently babysitting we do have sights of a queen potentially coming here but it is moving away from our king so in essence one of the key things that was brought out of the period after the original um, beginning tutorial is keeping the king company yep um, so we can spend time moving our pieces away from our own king but then somehow the opponent can end up attacking your king area because you've left it home alone so it's a key thing I think in terms of what makes a good movement for my game anyway especially so for now I'm just going to bring the bishop here feeling comfortable that it is targeting a piece but it's developing the bishop and it is keeping the king company as best possible anyway for now ideally it would like to come here and come here and come here so the knight's jumping into the center oh i don't believe that <laughs> i don't believe that <laughs> that was a mouse slip <laughs> these things happen yeah that was a it was not even a mouse slip i think i'd kept i don't know what you know preemptive thing or something of the other on there messing about with the mouse yeah i was just about to say well the knight's jumped in there and um, we could look to um, not take because obviously he's going to be managing the center here so I don't believe we were going to be taking um, but now that that's happened this pawn is now free so our knight can take so out of the badness of that mouse slip comes a positive is there a negative from us doing that the queen can come and attack the knight I suppose we can come back again and attack the pawn so sometimes mouse slipping or whatever it is gives you a little bit of advantage because now we're actually plus one out of that and we didn't actually mean to do that but now because we didn't mean to do it I need to reframe my position and have a focal point on what it is that I'm wanting to do I want to keep my king with some company there's no further attacks this pawn is by itself I think they're rushing to try and come here to eventually get some sort of pin on both of these I don't think there's anything else that I can attack Bishop could come here and attack his Bishop interested while he's trying to fashion his Rook coming here I think that's um, okay time's running out oh my gosh oh dear I thought I was on a long play game it says 10 minutes zero increment oh that's why they're so chilled okay all right okay let's let's uh, shall we just attack the pawn so as beginners if we're real real with ourselves we will make mistakes like that we will drop pieces um we will have unprotected pieces um majorly so and we will move pieces to the wrong squares so we have to accept all of those um situations and now we can win their queen based on the discover check with our queen onto their king Nice and ugly game of chess. There we go. Okay, so.
absolute beginners in chess that is the type of game that you can expect to play in reality not the fancy stuff that you see the higher level players showing you um, with all the complicated lines and all the tactics and stuff like that that is the type of game that you're going to be playing if you're a normal human being and you, you know you're not gifted you're not a prodigy or anything like that and you're just a normal person who just wants to enjoy playing the game of chess your games are going to look something like that if you are a genuine beginner in chess so we'll break it down we'll break down the ugliness of being a beginner in chess and being realistic with yourself yeah so did it let's go here so this will be the type of game that you will play unless of course you're going for like a real stone wall type situation um, then maybe probably need to look at how to find those pawn breaks in those situations because even the major computers are frowning on the stone wall type games okay so we're inching through just pushing the pawn up nice and steadily just looking to manage any type of area in the initial outset the opponent has managed some key squares with their pawns already so they're further developed down the board so they're managing some key squares and definitely got a stronghold on this particular square which is like a central square but we do like to manage around the center but we also want to have a good understanding of how opponents manage the center and try and control that center as well so that we can defend that area so they push through the center so at that point we thought oh this might be give us a good opportunity to get that area opened up so that felt quite nice for us positionally anyway and we push through onto the queen smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong one of the key things for absolute beginners if you've got a smaller piece that can attack a higher piece and can do so safely and it, it's supported then go for it it makes the game a whole lot simpler rather than looking for fancy tactics smaller piece attacking a higher piece should get the opponent thinking "Ooh, I'm, i have to do something so if you're making them think about something then you're actually stopping them from developing any potential attacks that they are thinking about so the knight jumps in and this was where i think i must have done some sort of preemptive maneuver erroneously I, I hadn't planned to do it i was messing about with the mouse whoops uh, i think i must have kept the click the drag on so the bishop took but there's not too, it's not too bad at the drop but i would have taken with the knight if i was going to take but i didn't i don't think i was planning on taking the knight because i wanted to have a look at the situation and i thought well snapping this pawn maybe might have been a better situation and the computer does actually say knight takes e5 so that's why I, f I said well that's a bit wrong but these things happen in chess you know as beginners you will make these types of maneuvers um you will miss like the golden shot of free piece you know because you're seeing the pressure that the knight's coming in here whoa what do i do about that i need to get rid of it and then you'll miss the golden fact that oh this pawn will be taken now i know people watching this they'll go oh i saw that yeah i wouldn't have done that i saw that blah 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 obviously this was a mouse slip so um we did see it it's just we just made it wrong um because of the click drag situation on the screen but in any event if we had missed it no harm or foul so we're treating this like we, we did miss it and we've just taken the knight off the board these things will happen 
So it's a draw at this moment in time, but it's a long way off a draw. So now the pawn does actually capture. We do have like a pass pawn type situation here, but it's uh, neither here nor there at this moment in time. So we grab the free pawn and then we start attacking the bishop. So straightforward, feeling good about the position. And then we bring the knight back. So this was like a nice big error. Again, this is like a, an error that can happen to anybody at any level, um, realistically. And it's a bit obvious again, because obviously what it's doing is it's blocking the queen's protection of the bishop. So the bishop can freely take now. So really, we should have just taken the bishop off the board, keeping it simple. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. That's the whole aim of absolute beginner. And it works its way all the way through to the advanced level in terms of keeping it as simple as possible. You've got to do it strategically so that you're basically placed in a, a half decent position for yourself. So yes, taking the bishop would have been advisable. Doesn't have to take, queen can take, but then we can save the bishop. And just take the b7, as it said on there. So that would have worked out better for us. So little things like that, it's looking a little bit ahead, not panicking, pieces under attack, but then we're blocking massive defense of our bishop. So they capture. So then it's now about the resolve that we've been practicing in terms of, okay, so we're in a bad state. We're down a piece. There's a key video that we do mention about <laughs> not losing chess, but I won't go on about that anymore. Um, so in terms of being realistic about the playing strength and style and system that you've got, as a beginner, firstly, we know that you're going to lose pieces because you know you're not experienced or you know your your rating isn't that level at this moment in time. So you you're not going to see everything. You know how the pieces move, so that's what you're practicing, and you're learning to capture a few pieces every now and then, and you're learning to try and improve the position on the board with your pieces. And then you're trying to work the pieces together eventually at some stage. But for now, you know, you're learning to capture, you're learning to move the piece, understanding what that piece can do, what it can't do, strengths and weaknesses of that, that piece. And then later on, you start studying the key squares and the, the key, piece, key pieces around those squares. So in this particular game here, now we're looking at saying, well, okay, so we're, we're down a piece, but how do we, how do we rectify the situation? Can we improve our position on the board? What we say is, no matter how many pieces you've got on the board, if they're not in the right places, then they tantamount them out to being useless. So we keep that in our back head, in the back of our heads right from the very beginning of playing chess as beginners. So smaller piece attacking the higher piece, can't be wrong as we've stated. And again, smaller piece attacking the higher piece. So the bishop moves back. So now our queen can move to this spot here, threatening to take this pawn. It's a small, it's a small attack, it's not major. They could leave that quite easily because if we did take then one of his rooks could just come here and just basically x-ray through to the pawn. I know this, but as an absolute beginner, you know, at the end of the day, you, you're attacking a piece. So you're feeling quite good about that. It does also have a diagonal through to the king. Obviously, that's a little bit more advanced, uh, might be intermediate, that type of thing. And it's like a long term situation. No guarantees that it's ever going to come off, but it's a nice position for it. It's guarded by the pawn. 
So they push the pawn down, so again it's guided by the pawn now, so our queen is fairly safe in this position. So the x-ray through is still holding true. That don't want to go too advanced, so that's as simple as it is. is uh, the queen is putting an x-ray through. As a beginner, yes, work on your pinning type situations, but don't think too long term. Just think, well, okay, what is my piece doing? And my pieces attempting to work together, um, get a feel for what the pieces can do at this moment. So the rook comes through now, it's looking to basically challenge the bishop, but also looking to hold court with the knight. If the knight comes here, then the queen can't take, so then it's attacking the bishop. So what does the bishop do? So the bishop moves out of the way, so it's getting rid of any initial threats that it's got on there, but realistically, we're not really interested in that bishop, because we'd have to double up the rooks in order to put some pressure on that. So we bring the knight up, attacking the bishop. And this was um, a nice position, and that's a realistic attack on the knight. You know, the pawn attacking the, the knight here. So, again, absolute beginners, they will do these things, yeah. And then, obviously, this falls into line quite nicely. The opponent's got more pieces on the board, more material on the board. As we've mentioned, if they're not in the right places, then they're tantamount to being really quite useless so as a beginner if we if we get that sort of mindset in our heads yes okay we might lose pieces but if we don't lose a piece still try and improve our position to make it feel like we've got five more pieces on the board than the opponent so we capture now in essence, we didn't need to capture. We could have just pushed the pawn here. Yep, c5, and then we would have won the queen because we still got the check on there. So again, that's not looking too far ahead. It's looking simple, and it's like taking a piece off the board. So that would have given them time to maneuver because it's attacking the rook. So basically, they could have moved the queen out of the way or they could have moved the king out of the way but we would have got a higher piece off the board so in any sense it's half decent so it is suggesting queen c5 so queen c5 is here yeah so it's taking itself off and it's blocking the pawn from actually putting the check so we would win a higher piece so in any event that beautiful Pawn maneuver there because we're out and out losing because materially they they're winning. But players can make mistakes, or you have to actually see that that is a mistake. So we can grab the pot, we can grab here, and we know we're going to get a higher piece of some type. And then they capture back, and then obviously we can go for the queen, and we can capture. So it's all pretty simple, straightforward at this moment, but the opponent is still playing on. Now, at this point in time, just because we've got a queen on the board does not mean you've won the game. Most times people will resign if they've lost their queen, but there are the players that go, well, so what? Let's see what you've got. Case in point in this game. So our key thing was trying to elevate our pawn up the board as best possible. And we probably didn't play this the best. But, as a beginner, the principle is just to try and get this pawn as high up the board as possible and look to basically get a rook off the board with a transference into some type of promotion. We're looking to be giddy and try and get across here as well, try to sort of condense the king in. But the bishop blocks, which was quite a nice touch, I think, and it's also got two on one here. But again, it's looking at the continuation of the movement after you've got a check on the king. 
does it have any meat on the bones in terms of continued pressure on the king towards either getting a checkmate type situation or getting a higher piece off the board so for me i would say this is kind of a nugatory tech because yes it wins them a tempo in movement but positionally it doesn't really give them much else so we can go and put a check on the king here like i said i don't know if we played this right or not but we wanted to put some pressure on to try and get some type of promotion they bring the rook back so we bring the queen across now just supporting the rook like i said don't think we played this the best but then we can capture the rook and put a check on and now just doubling up here and obviously these things happen because that's sp that spot there we are beginners this is the beginning um tutorial so these types of errors will happen bringing the rook here thinking we're doubling up and um trying to go for this spot here but then we've landed on the bishop ninja bishop so we, we have to take and at this point obviously we can look to um exchange off and grab so we're, we've got a queen so at this point here now it's not really a, a losing situation so we can just go up and get a checkmate on that side so that is the beginners tutorial uh, for chess 2022